Hello there, it's me Roland and this is Bilingual Analytics. I'm super glad to see you here. A week or so ago, I talked about role-level security, focusing on the basics. I explained how to create roles and rules in Power BI Desktop, how to assign users to roles and topics like that. If you haven't watched it yet, I would suggest starting with that video. You can find a link in the top right corner and in the description below. Today, I would like to show you how to take RLS to the next level by creating something called a dynamic role-level security. But hey, what is dynamic RLS? Usually, it refers to some advanced security options, something that could be used for hundreds of users rather than setting up that many individual roles. Most importantly, it utilizes the user principle function, but more on that later. So what's on the agenda for today? I'm going to show you how to write DAX statements based on user's role without the need to adjust any of your existing queries or tables. I will also explain the steps I use to find this solution so we go layer by layer to understand what's going on under the hood. If you stay till the end, you will learn how to create super flexible security setups in Power BI where you can easily set up rules based on any fields and any number of fields in your data model. Sounds great, right? If you learned something new from this video, I would like you to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me to measure popularity of the topic, but more importantly, helps others to find this video on the interwebs. So here is the problem that we are going to solve today. Let's say that Bilingual Analytics is a massive global retailer. Our goal is to take down AdventureWorks. We sell multiple product groups for hundreds of customers within several geolocations. Each of these fields should be used to set up security settings for our single Power BI report. Just for the sake of this demo, let's say that there are six unique product groups, three main geographical areas, and three key accounts. Using the basic RLS setup, that would require us to create six times three times three roles in desktop, so in total, 54 different roles. Roles such as electronics products sold to Apple in APAC then assign the right user to the right group in the service. It would be a difficult project to create and a nightmare to manage. But this is exactly where dynamic RLS comes handy. At the back end of my report, I have a users table, which is going to drive security settings. I have email address, username, and three different fields to restrict data. For example, Bill, our CEO, should see all data without any restrictions. This is why we have none in those three restriction columns. However, Shrika should only see computers products sold in APAC for all Microsoft customers. Once again, because she is only responsible for those. But enough of all of that, let's jump into Power BI and work our way through the DAX magic. To understand what sort of a DAX we can or need to use, we have to start with the basics. I'm not going to lie, I spent countless hours browsing this official Microsoft documentation. Shout out to the team who put this together, it is a great starting point. The basic principle to understand is that for Power BI roles to work flawlessly, the DAX we write must produce a true or false statement. True will allow users to see data, while false will restrict access. This is also listed in Power BI Desktop. Buckle up, this is going to be a fun ride and we are going to learn a lot about role level security today. Let's start by creating our first role just to see the basics in action. It's a simple false statement on our products table. If we test this role, you can see no data is visible. Let's change false to true for this role while I'm still testing it. With that small change, we can now see all data, essentially no filters or security settings applied. It's important to get this concept right, as this is the basis of the next steps. Let's create our second test, this time focusing on the product security settings. Last time we had a hard-coded rule for electronics, something like group equals electronics, but with the dynamic RLS role, I'm going to create a variable first. This variable is going to provide the flexibility later down the track. But at first, let's keep the variable still hard-coded to electronics, just for this test. And now, if we test this security profile, you can see we are restricted to electronics product range. We are getting there. So we have a logic for a single group, 
but how do we manage access for those? We should see all products. Remember, they have the text none in those restriction fields. In your setup, it could be anything else, but to me, this makes sense when no restriction applies to a user. I can create a third dynamic RLS where my restriction is going to be hard-coded to none, exactly the same as the previous step so far. However, once that's done, I need to add a switch statement and flag that if the restriction is equal to none, then the result should be true. You see, this is why I wanted to start from the basics in this video. Let's test the role. This RLS with the switch statement is going to give us all results. Let's expand on this and create the fourth version of the dynamic RLS, but with electronics and no restriction in our mind, making sure that once we pick up the right value, the logic will work fine. Again, I'm going to expand the switch statement by keeping the restriction on the top hard-coded. If the restriction is none, then show me all data by switching to a true statement. But when restriction is electronics, only show electronics data. If another value pops up, don't show anything in the report. In other words, restrict access. Of course, right now it wouldn't happen because I'm hard-coding values. Now that we have this logic, I can change the restriction variable on the top from none to electronics. Let's see what's going to happen if we play around here. Let's further optimize this last version by thinking about the next steps. I know that the restriction variable could be any value from the group field in the products table. So instead of hard coding within the switch statement to electronics, just use the variable. While my variable on the top is still hard coded, the switch statement below is much more flexible. If the restriction in my user table equals to none, this security setting will show all data but if it is any single category, the report will only surface that product group. Let's test this role as well. Let's pause here for a moment before we go to the next logical step. What have we have so far? Or in other words, what have we learned? For Power BI security roles to work, we need a true or false statement. With a little bit of text magic and utilizing a variable, we can manipulate the end result, just like what we would normally do in a simple DAX measure. With the final, or I should rather say fifth version of this RLS setup, we got to a point where the only thing we need to further adjust is to pick up the restriction value instead of hard coding it. Luckily, with a bit more DAX logic, we can achieve that. So let's head back to Power BI and work on that. In the users table, each user has their email address, and this is going to be crucial to get any kind of dynamic RLS up and running. As I mentioned in the intro, we can use the user principal name function to pick up in the service who logged in. It will be used as a filter, but we still need to pick up the associated value. One way to do this is to use calculate table function and place a values function in it. Of course, with the user filter at the end. There are two reasons why I decided to go this way. First of all, this is something that I know how to do. Secondly, to be able to add the filter, I needed to use some sort of a calculate function. And we can just place the same switch statement at the end that we used in the previous version. From this point onwards, it is not enough to just select a role. We also have to feed in a username or more precisely user principal name or email address. I'm going to use Ted's email address because his access should be limited to automotive products. Let's switch to Fran and see if this dynamic RLS is working. It seems to me that we hit the jackpot. And finally, let's tidy up our DAX a little bit. I'm going to place the switch statement inside another variable called RLS restriction. 
The main reason why I think this code is going to be better for us is because it's going to be more portable, easier to use for others, and easier to troubleshoot. We are doing great so far. Managed to set up a dynamic role level security based on the product group that we sell. It guarantees that our users' access will be limited based on their responsibilities. It also helps us report creators to manage RLS within a single role. In the final report, I don't need to create six different roles just to manage the product group level restriction. restriction. Which brings us to the next point. How can we expand this logic to multiple dimension tables? As I mentioned, having all of that DEX logic written within variables allow us to simply copy-paste the code within the same role to another table and use other fields to drive security settings. Let me show you how. So this is going to be our eighth and hopefully the final version of this demo. Let's select the DEX code from the products table and head over to the geo table. Paste it and change two fields. First, at the top the values that we want to pick up from the users table. Then secondly, in the switch statement, the value that we want to match to. And with those changes, we are done. Let's also do the same thing within the customer query, just to finish off this demo. and move to the logistic report page to be able to show this final setup in action. I have Shrika, whose access should be limited by product, geolocation, and by customer as well. Let's see her profile and the eighth version of the dynamic security settings. Again, please keep in mind that once we have dynamic RLS rules, we need to feed a username into Power BI Desktop to view the report as a certain user. Wow, it works beautifully. With these steps, I was able to create a single security profile in my report, which will make managing RLS heaps easier. It allows me to add all users or a group of users to a single RLS role within the service. Not only that, but it also allows me to manage it from the backend. In this case, I use the handy Excel spreadsheet to set up this demo, but in some organization, I reckon this data is already available somewhere, maybe in AD or in an HR dataset, so it shouldn't be too difficult to set up. Please keep in mind that all dynamic RLS setups include DAX calculations, which means that it comes with some performance overhead. You can test how much complexity a role adds to your report by running the performance analyzer as you, a report creator, and then compare timings to running it as a report viewer affected by RLS. I have a feeling that my code may not be the best optimized DAX, but it works, even with a large scale model. If you have any ideas how to fine tune or further optimize it, please let me know in the comment section below so everyone can learn from that. But because it's DAX, it also means that the logic is flexible. So you can think about other ways of implementing this in your reports based on your requirement. For example, you can add an end statement to secure the database based on multiple fields within a single query. Additionally, I would suggest to hide the user's table as soon as you import it. It serves no purpose in the report other than the RLS setup, and report users shouldn't need access to it. That way, even if they start personalizing visuals, you can be 100% sure that they won't get confused by that table. And lastly, while I was recording this demo, I had another idea. In some cases, it is possible that a single user's access is not limited to a single value, meaning that let's say one of my colleagues at Bilingual Analytics is responsible for electronics and computers as well. I haven't had a chance to look into this further, but I think for that to work, we would need to adjust two things. First, the user's table to include another record with the second product group. Secondly, Within the switch statement, include an in operator instead of an equal sign, or maybe an or operator. Haven't had enough time to fully explore this option. If you plan to replicate this dynamic RLS in your report, I would definitely suggest to think about an option like that. Even if you don't need it right now, you can easily future-proof your security setup. And with that said, I think we covered everything that you need to know about this next level dynamic security setup. 
You don't need to create any relationships within your model. There is no need to add role IDs to the fact table. It's a simple but super powerful security setup. So what do you think? Let me know down in the comment section below if you have used something similar before. Also, if you have any idea how to further optimize the DEX, do not hesitate to let me know. I'm almost certain that someone with better DEX skills would be able to make some suggestions. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that all of it made sense and you learned something new today. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button on your way out or before you watch any of the above tutorials. Until the next one, see ya!